This video describes the force length relationship of the muscle. The force length relationship of the muscle has to do a lot with cross bridge kinetics and how the myosin and actin filaments work together to provide you with the most force. If you remember how the muscle works, I can give you a demonstration. Now just imagine that my arms are myosin molecules. This bar here is an actin molecule. So what would occur is that when you have a depolarization of your muscle, the action potential travels down to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium. Now, my myosin molecule is not attached to the actin molecule. The calcium will open up an active site on the actin, which will allow my myosin to grab onto the actin and, with the cleaving of an ATP molecule, release energy. With the release of energy, the myosin molecule moves over and pulls the muscle together. Once the ATP changes to ADP, it releases and snaps back, and the cycle starts again. Another calcium would open up an active site on the actin. Myosin will then grab on. ATP will be cleaved, energy released, and pull over. When we're doing an isometric contraction, we have the most number of cross bridges connected, approximately 50% and you're strongest with an isometric contraction. And that's true at the optimal length of the muscle. You have the most cross bridge connections. However, when a muscle is lengthened or shortened, you have fewer cross bridges. So, what will happen? If we pick up a weight here, and I'm doing a bicep curl, what will occur is that when the arm is lengthened or the muscle is lengthened, I have the fewest cross bridges. As I bring it up to its optimal length of the muscle, I have the most cross bridges. So here, I would be the strongest. As I bring it all the way up, those cross bridges will now start to interfere. The myosin and the actin molecules, the actin molecules will interfere with the attachment of the myosin molecules. So you're weak at the longest range of motion, you're strong in the mid-range range of motion, and you're weak again because of that interference at the top of the range of motion. So really, when you're lifting weights, doing bicep curls, you're actually picking the weight that you're weakest at. So for example, if I pick a heavy weight, I can't do a full range of motion because at this point, I'm at a position where I have fewer actin cross bridges with my myosin. But if I brought that weight up to the optimal position, I can do more contractions because I'm going from my optimal position where I have more cross bridges. So normally, when you read a uh, fitness training book, they recommend that you do a full range of motion and they're absolutely correct. When doing most exercises, you want to do a full range of motion in order to activate as many muscle fibers as you can. But eventually, of course, you'll fatigue. And when you hit that fatigue point where you can't lift it anymore, it's only because you're fatigued at your weakest point. There's such a thing called cheat reps or cheat repetitions. A cheat repetition would be to use your body to help get the weight up to your optimal position and then you may be able to squeeze out a few more repetitions from the optimal position where you have more of the actin and myosin molecules attached. And therefore, you get a much greater uh, workout for the muscle.